What is going on guys? My name is Jorge and this is my Procharged Pontiac G8 GT and today we're actually going to be installing some new AEM boost and wideband gauges that are going to make tuning and data logging this thing way much simpler. So let's get going. I have the gauges. I've got the wideband brand new. Um, this is actually the X series wideband gauge. It's one of their latest and greatest. It actually is going to allow me to pass through the wideband data to my CAN bus system for HP tuners to easily pick up that information and record it with any type of data log and scanning. And obviously we want everything to match and so I've also gotten the boost gauge. Alright guys, let's get you guys a nice cold startup of this G8 Pro Charge GT. So these were the gauges I had before. They were two glow shift gauges. So I'm going to get rid of those two and put in the new ones. Now to do that, we're actually going to have to remove this pillar, go work around our way here through these panels and down under in the fuse box. So I'll get to work and hopefully show you guys some progress. All right, guys. So here we go. This is the AEM setup. Got some connectors and cables, the OBD2 and the wideband compared to this thing. Whew! Man, this is a lot more work than I thought. Uh, as of now, I rerouted the secondary O2, um, the one that's going for the wideband, the wideband sensor. I've plugged that in, zip tied everything I need to do, ran it through the firewall, and now I've got that connection done. Now it's on to doing the final stuff, which is all the wiring inside. I think I've completely finished with the outside. And so I'll go ahead and start wiring all that up, giving it power and testing these things out. Hopefully they All right, guys. So I've mocked it all up, got the wide band. I've plugged in all the sensors. And now just a matter of switching in the ignition. And boom we got power the sensor's working looks like it's got to do a little heater circuit sensor and obviously there we go so obviously right now it's showing real lean because the car's off but it's working the sensor's working it's got a bunch of different modes uh, we'll probably still have to calibrate it but for now it's working um, now to do now I got to do the boost gauge Alright guys, so now here we got boost gauge, so let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what all comes with this with this thing. And if we have a gauge, we've got a wiring harness, some vacuum lines, which I won't need thankfully. You got your sensor with adapters and zip ties and some grips. So let's get to it. We'll go ahead and try to wire this one up, and hopefully I'll be done. Well, guys, there you have it. I got them in. They look great. Um, my air and fuel ratio is working properly. My boost gauge I'm a little concerned about because it's only showing minus three at idle or in vacuum, which my old one, which is just analog, was showing minus ten. So I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if something wrong with the sensor. But other than that, I mean, it's working properly. Um, I do have to finish just some other stuff, but everything else is working great. I mean, you guys see, see the... But as you can see, my vacuum, it should be going back all the way to minus 20 like it used to, and it's not. And if I give it enough gas... Almost 7 pounds. 7.7 pounds. I don't think I'm doing 7.7 pounds. 
but you never know. So, uh, also another thing that concerns me about this is when you just have the switched key on. As you guys can see, um, the car is off. It's not on, and apparently I'm at 1.3 pounds of boost. So, something's wrong. I don't know if maybe my ground needs to my ground is not being referenced right. I'm going to try something right now, maybe try a different ground and hopefully that'll work, but for now, this is what I've got. Um, I'm really more worried about that wideband feature because now I actually have a wideband connection to my OBD2 port, which is right here. So this is part of the wideband, so it'll allow me to plug right into the OBD2 port and then connect my HP tuners to be able to data log wideband along with all the other information. So I'm excited. Well guys, I just finished the install of the gauges, buttoned everything back up. I'm crazy drenched in sweat actually. Um, and I think I really need a shop fan here uh, or something because this garage is very enclosed. It has no, no air, so I sweat a lot. But the gauges are on. They seem to be working properly. At least the wideband is. Um, I'm not sure about the boost gauge. Um, my old one was an analog, so I didn't really have any electronics or sensors. Um, this one is tapped off of the vacuum line from the analog. Um, it is being run from the engine all the way into the uh, cabin. So I don't know if maybe the length is the issue or what it is, but um, it does read the boost. It reads all that. Um, it might be more sensitive. Maybe it's more accurate and I've just had the wrong analog gauge that doesn't isn't as accurate showing me wrong things that I thought was boost and it's not. So, um, but that's working. That's all good and dandy. Um, they look great. I'm excited. Um, and uh, now I think I'm finally ready for that dyno tune which is scheduled for Monday. So, Guys, keep a, keep a watch out for that video of the dyno, of when I take this car to the dyno. I'm really excited. I hope it makes 700, or at least 700, um, but it's been a fun car. I'm enjoying it, and it's working great. So hopefully you guys are having a good day. Hopefully you guys are having a great time, enjoying yourself. Uh, you know, hopefully I'm able to bring you guys some entertainment. And if you like what you see, please like, comment, subscribe. If you guys have had experience with these AEM boost gauges with the sensors, can you guys maybe comment down why I could be seeing that possible issue with my boost sensor? It's brand new. Um, is it maybe a sensor? Do I need to replace the sensor? Uh, I've done the grounding, checked all that stuff. Um, but I am a little concerned about that, but not too much. Um, in the end, I'm not going to get on it until it's on the dyno and, you know, the computers reading all that good information so if you guys have had experience with that let me know what fixed it what was the problem what you guys had to do did you guys have to maybe return sensors or gauges whatever the case may be comment down below let me know uh, I'm very interested to find out what is wrong with this thing but until the next one guys which should be the dyno video I hope you guys subscribe like comment ring that little notification bell so you guys can be one of the first people to hear this thing when it gets on from when I put it on the dyno uh, I'm so excited, but anyways till next one guys you guys have a good one